Hello everyone and welcome to Cineful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video, we're going to talk getting started with Warhammer Age of Sigmar Warcry, and today we're going to take a look at the Soulblight Gravelords. In this video, we're going to go through, talk about how the Soulblight Gravelords work on the tabletop. We'll then take a look at a couple of units we recommend to get started with for the Soulblight, and then take a look at some other units to expand upon after those first couple of initial purchases. Finally, at the end of the video, we'll show you a little sample warband of a thousand renown for you to use as some inspiration creating your own Soulbound warband. Now, it is worth noting, you can download the Warcry core rules and indeed the rules for this warband in the Harbingers of Death uh, PDFs, which are available from warhangercommunity.com. Simply go to the download section of the website underneath the Warcry header and you'll find a ton of downloads for Warcry. Now, looking at the Soul by Grey Lords, how do they function on the tabletop? First of all, they work around having really strong and influential heroes leading hordes of lesser troops into battle. Generally, your minion troops can be brought back by your heroes in different ways, and you generally have some elite bodyguard-like or elite heavy hitter hammers or indeed some nice anvil troops to act as additional support for the rest of your force. You've got a cool reaction, which also will allow you to reduce the amount of damage done to a friendly fighter by melee attacks, further utilizing your nice defensive abilities and abilities to bring stuff back. And so to get started with, with the Soulblight Gravelords, there's no better place than grabbing yourself a Vampire Lord. Now, the Soulblight Gravelords Vampire Lord can use a triple for Call of the Feast, where until the end of the battle round, you add one to your attacks characteristic of melee attack action made by visible friendly fighters while within 6 inch. So a nice good bonus there. And you can also summon undead minions with your Vampire Lord, or indeed any other Soulblight hero you have, which allows you to bring back your minion rune mark fighters now, your Vampire Lord also is not too shabby in a fight. Toughness 5 is really solid with 25 wounds. 4 attacks at strength 4, 2, 6 on the damage is also really nice. It's interesting to note as well that your Vampire Lord does have the Fly Rune Mark, as they can turn into a bunch of bats. You can see the hair sort of carries her off. Now, alongside this Vampire Lord, we can look at a couple of different minion troops but my personal favorite is the dead walker zombies now i'll explain my reasoning why i like these over the skeleton warriors now the skeleton warriors do get toughness for but they have eight wounds rather than the 10 that your zombies will have zombies do have toughness at three but they do also have a higher crit value on their attacks at one four though generally a less attack than your ancient blade wielding skeletons I like those extra wounds on the zombies. It means your opponent has to get through more hits onto them. Um, it means they have to actually dedicate a lot more sort of time and effort and fighters activations into your zombies, meaning you can bring them back as well. I think in this case, generally going for the more wounds is maybe a better choice than taking the extra defense and armor. Looking at where we can go next, another hero I really like for the Soul by Grave Lords is the Necromancer. Your standard sort of a wizard ranged attack, 3 to 7 inch range, 2 attacks at strength 3, 3 6 on the damage, 20 wounds, only toughness 3, but the quad that this model can bring to the table is a good one. Van Hells and Dance Macabre, you pick a number of visible friendly fighters with the Soul by Grave Lords. Faction Rumark and the Minion Rumark, so Zombies and Skeletons and Graveguard all have that Minion Rumark. And you get to pick a number of them equal to the value of the ability within 6 inches of this fighter, and they can make a bonus move or a bonus attack action. And you can choose to make moves and attacks with different models if you so want to. It's just a really solid ability. On top of this, you also get Akras to Necrotic Siphon, where you pick a visible friendly minion at Soul Black Grave Lords Rumark Fighter and allocate a number of damage points equal to the value of ability to the minion and then recover that amount of points on your Necromancer. Really cool for keeping the Necromancer alive. Now, we then look into some other troops. And a big reason I'm not the biggest fan of Skeletons is I think Grave Guard, for the points different, just are a better choice. Now, Grave Guard can be a little bit more offensive. You can choose to take them with Great White Blades to get a nice bit of Strength 5 on some cheap troops. 65 Renown to get Strength 5 and 2-4 on the damage with 10 Wounds and Toughness 3, I think is really well worth it. 
you can choose to drop down to strength 4 and be 1-4 on the damage rather than 2-4, but gain a point of toughness to put you up to toughness 4. 10 renown cheaper, and that is the White Blade and Crypt Shield. I think Grave Guard, for me, just the extra couple of renown, you are getting a much better unit than you would Skeletons. Now, looking into a more elite style of unit that can provide some nice bit of anvil work for you is a Kasagi Night Guard. Toughness for 30 wounds, just really solid bulk there. And then two attacks at strength 5, 2 5 on the damage. Very few attacks, but they can get a good amount of hits in. And if you can bolster their attacks with something like the Vampire Lord, they can be really quite deadly. Lastly, I think Blood Knights add something to your force. They are going to add a fast moving unit with a nice movement of 8, their cavalry. They're also going to be able to do the cool call of the blood uh, ability like your Vampire Lord as well. But they are going to pack a punch as well. They're going to bring strength 5 to the table if you choose to take that Templar Lance, which is cool, with 3 attacks at 2 to 4 on the damage. Or you can go for an extra attack and drop down to strength 4 if you choose to go with the Templar Blade instead. On top of that, the Blood Knights are also going to provide you with the ability to deal some direct damage if they manage to do a charge with their cool ability that is going to be the Deathly Charge, where they just go in, smash the enemies, and do a bunch of damage equal to the value of the double that they're using for the ability. Now, here we have our sample warband. We've got the Vampire Lord, who, of course, is going to be our champion. Just such a survivable hero for the Soul Black Grave Lords. I think it's essential you make them the champion over the Necromancer. Many different scenarios prioritize your opponent trying to go for your champion. And so having that champion be that little bit more resilient is definitely a good thing to have. Obviously, we've got the Necromancer in there as well. These two heroes function really well and give you a widespread of different abilities and access to things like quads and triples and doubles. So your heroes never have any of their sort of pairs of dice wasted. Now, final-wise, we've got four Deadwalker Zombies. These are going to be, you know, the bulk of our troops. They're going to generally try and go for treasure and stuff like that and generally be a nuisance in early activations in our turn for the Warband. Two Graveguard with great white blades provide a nice couple of interesting pieces for the force. I like these because they can be quite scary and your opponent feels like they have to deal with them, but they are not the pieces that your opponent should actually be concerned with. Meanwhile, a Kosagi Knight Guard provides a really good anvil piece and a Blood Knight with Templar Lance provides some high strength damage dealing ability at speed. We've got a thousand renown out of a thousand renown spent. Love it when it's on the dot. 160 wounds is a pretty well above the average sort of wound of that 120 to 140, and 10 activations is a nice high average for the Soul Black Grave Lords. If you've been playing with them in Warcraft, let us know how you've been going and what you would do down in the comments below. And so that is the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, why not come join our Discord server as well, which you can find linked in the video's description. Also linked in the video's description is the best way to help support the channel via Patreon or YouTube members. If you'd like to help support either, it would be greatly appreciated as it goes towards making the channel better and better at doing what we continue to do here. We'd like to give a special shout out to all our Patreons and YouTube members, so a thank you to our Patreons, Christian Weir, Soren, Greenskins Gaming, Kenny Lowe, Alderon Shot First, Andrew Bowen, Nathan Fee, The Rising Ape, Cure Dynamic, Anthony B, JJ Austrian, Average Wargamer, Domir, Mark Harvey, James Cater, Derek, and GRP390. And also a shout out to our YouTube members, Green Roots Gaming, Kenton Young, Ronya, Lock Lorik, The Johnny84, David Ellsworth, Wolfric Nick, Broken Chef, Ariana Edwards, Revenar, Pink Nico Fire, Robin Mankiller, Monty's Tabletop, Terrain, and John Castle. Lastly, a special shout out to all the people who help support the channel via sponsorship or via collaborations. And a special thanks as well to Lady Witch Fox Art, who does all the amazing artwork you see on the channel. Thank you all for watching. Once again, everyone, stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the grey. Ciao for now.